Alright guys, what is going on? Without further ado, I'm just going to crack into this. Today's video is titled, Four Weeks Out and the Four Reasons Why I Can't Compete. Now, I know some of my viewers have been following along. You may be competing yourself, you may have thought about competing, and you're looking to me for inspiration. Well, before I do tell you guys any of these reasons, I want to say one thing. This whole bodybuilding thing, whether it's you know, the training aspects, whether it's the dieting aspect, and whether you take it to the absolute extreme and actually jump on a bodybuilding stage, all of this shit has to be for you. You need to be doing it for yourself. You need to be, you know, you need to have that fire deep inside burning so that you can punish yourself when no one else is watching. You know, that's the key. And at the moment, guys, if I was to compete in four weeks' time, it would be completely and utterly for you guys. It would not be for me. Not only that, but I think the person who I feel like I'm letting down the most by making this video is my, my mate Dylan down in Adelaide. I know you'll be watching this, man. This guy, um, this guy, it's gonna be his first time on stage. He's come in absolutely shredded. He's stuck to the diet 110% from the start. It's his first time. He wants to absolutely fucking kill it, and he's going to. My first time, you know, I was a rookie. I thought I was in good shape, but I found out very, very quickly what kind of shape you really, really needed to get in to, to jump up on that stage and do well. And to get yourself in that kind of condition is week after week after week of hardcore fucking dieting. And once you think you're lean, you've still got 5% body fat to lose. And at the moment, guys, this brings me into my first point. I'm not gonna be ready, okay? First and foremost, I am not going to be ready in four weeks, there is absolutely no way. I'm looking at guys like Dylan, I'm looking at other competitors, I'm thinking, you know, what I'm thinking right now, I'm not thinking, oh shit, he's gonna beat me. I'm just thinking, well done, you know, kudos to you, you've fucking done it, you've, you've knuckled down. I can't do that. I can't do it, and especially not in four weeks. If I am going to suck myself down, being a natural in the next four weeks for this show, I'm going to look like a fucking stick. Not only that, but these four weeks are just going to be absolutely horrible. They're going to be terrible. But I've done it to myself because I haven't got in shape in time. And that's what you need to do. That would have to be the major reason why I'm not competing in four weeks. I just can't get ready. Secondly, some of you guys may know, if you've followed my journey for a while, I own two properties. I've got a car that I'm paying off, I've got credit cards to pay off, etc, etc, etc. I'm not going to go into it, but basically guys, look, I live in Alice Springs, it's a remote area. We don't have a local show here. If we did, I may have done it for the last three years, but we don't. So what that means is that every time we travel out of Alice Springs, it's going to cost at least 300 each way, wherever you want to go, any major city plus accommodation, plus food, entry fees, I've got tanning fees, all up, it's probably at least gonna cost me about $1,500 for this you know, four or five day trip. Like you guys know, I've just got back from Thailand. That was a cost, you know, I've got rates coming in, I've got bills coming in. It's not impossible for me to get down there, but the fact is, is that that credit card that's slowly, slowly going down is just gonna be thrown right back up. And um, I'm not prepared to do that. For a five dollar plastic trophy i think that's what it really comes down to unfortunately you know i know that's harsh but you know all of this hard work for for a five dollar plastic trophy that doesn't even have your name on it man i don't know and thirdly look don't let me depress you guys too much right now we're going to talk about the third reason and that is the inba now i thought I, I, I honestly thought the INBA was a fantastic organization, and I still do, but looking through the rules online, now let me get my computer here, I'm going to read you guys this straight from the horse's mouth. Now some of you guys may have come to my channel because you've seen my gyno video, I have struggled with gynecomastia since puberty, it hasn't gone away, it's not going to go away, the leaner I get the more pronounced it gets, especially underneath those lights with 
with the tan. If you're doing an ab shot or something like that, you can literally see a circle of, t of tissue around your nipple and it shows up so badly. And I just want to read you this extract from the rule book from the IMBA website. Now you listen to this and tell me what you'd do. Okay, so signs of drug use. A competitor who displays any sign of using drugs, i.e. bitch tits, and they've literally written bitch tits, alright? <laughs> a competitor who displays any sign of using drugs, i.e. bitch tits, is encouraged not to compete until they have rectified the problem. This is regardless of their drug-free status. The credibility of the naturals and the competitor themselves is undermined when the audience see what they believe is the result of drug use on stage in a natural contest. And I can completely understand. If I saw a guy up there, you know, with pronounced gyno, with, a, with an impressive physique, what are you going to think? Anyways, the judges will be notified to treat any sign of drug use as a substantial fault and mark the competitor down. So guys, without getting into it without giving my opinion on the matter. That is the third reason why I'm not competing. And number four, guys, number four is, is it's inside me, all right? It's nothing physical. It's nothing, you know, monetary. It's nothing. It's, it's what's inside me. And right now, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a bit of a history lesson, all right? First cut down in January of 2014 from 102 kilo down to about 90 and I thought, sweet, I'm in great shape. That was about April of 2014. So we're talking over two years ago, right? From there, I bulked up to about 98, came back down to about 90. I bulked up to 96, down to 90, up to 98 again at Christmas time, down to 90. And honestly, for the last six months, I've been umming and ahhing about competing. My weight has stayed between 89 and 92 kilos for the last six months. I haven't made any strength gains. Now my body, the way I see it, my body has a sticking point. It's got a plateau, and that is at around about 90 kilograms. My body just does not want to go under 90 kilograms. It's gonna take, it's gonna take weeks and weeks of, of hardcore dieting, like I said, just to get me under that point. And then to go on from there, you know, 88 kilo, 87, to get to like 85, which has always been my stage weight that I thought I'd be really impressively lean at. You know, I can get myself to 88 kilo and, and I'm struggling, man. Like, you've seen in this prep, you know, I got, I got myself to 88 kilo and I was feeling lean. I was feeling fucking good. And I was faced with another, you know, six to eight weeks of, of dieting on less than 200 carbs a day, you know, less than 60 fat a day uh, to get myself into shape. And mentally... Mentally, man, after the last two years of just struggling and struggling and struggling and killing myself inside, telling myself I needed to get leaner and then, you know, going on these bulks and just doing it way, way too fast, putting on the fat, you know, eight kilos in eight weeks is, is what I've done a couple of times. Natural. We're talking about, it's, it's, that's not muscle gain, guys. That's mostly fat gain. And if I could have only put on two kilos in those eight weeks... I'd be in such a better position to continue bulking like I know I should. After my, com after my first competition last year, we're talking October 2015, it's nearly a year ago now, I said to myself, I said to social media, I told all you guys, I've got to go on a year bulk, I've got to do it, a year, a whole year, I'm going to stick to, I'm going to, stick to it, I'm going to bulk for a year, and then I may have built some muscle, probably up to about 100 kgs again, and I'll be in a fantastic position to cut back down and do another show. Well, guess what, guys? I jumped on stage at 87 kilo last year. Uh, by Christmas time, this is 10 weeks later, I was at 98 kilograms. Once again, I'd smashed the food. I said, fuck it. I was eating shit food every single night. I was dirty bulking to the absolute max. And that's what happens, guys. That's what happens. I thought I was, I thought I was immune once again to fat gain. Well... Each and every time, I've, I've found out very rudely that I'm not. And, um, and with that being said, guys, with that being said, this time, because I am transitioning back into a bulk, this last week, since the last video that I made, five weeks out, I've basically been, you know, slowly increasing my calories, not going stupid, and, you know, filling my body out again with carbohydrates, filling my glycogen stores up. <laughs> and honestly, guys, last night, I went and trained some arms, 
and I had literally forgotten what a pump felt like. It was amazing. It was fucking amazing. Finally, I'm training in the gym with the nutrients I need and with the nutrients my body needs. And you know, being natural, to have a really amazing pump and to have a, have a great workout, an amazing workout where you feel like you're getting a few extra reps and you know, you're feeling stronger and stuff, that's an amazing feeling because while you're cutting, man, you don't feel that. You just do not feel that. that that's a feeling you forget. You literally do. Like I, I felt like it was normal um, not getting much of a pump. And, and that's, that's fucking dangerous, man. That's, that's shit. And that feeling, guys, of the pump is addictive as fuck. Just like Arnold said, the pump is almost as good as coming. Uh, I'm not going to go there, but uh, you know it is pretty fucking addictive. And I tell you what, the feeling I got last night, that just... Because like, obviously this week, before I made this video, I still wasn't completely sure what I was going to do. But it's come to the point where it's four weeks out and there's just no way I can do it. Because of those other reasons too. But, fuck mate. I had a good day of carbohydrates all throughout the day. I was all full up, the glycogen stores were full. I went to the gym, I smashed some arms, biceps and tries. That pump was amazing. I thought, how the fuck could I have pumps like this in the gym and then go back to a low carbohydrate diet and, and start dieting again? I just can't. I'm on the gain train now, well and truly. For you guys who are on the gain train too, fucking welcome me in, because I'm coming back. I'm gonna get back to what I do best which is eat, train hard, and build some fucking muscle because it's been way too long. So with that being said, guys, that was my video four weeks out and the four reasons why I can't compete. I hope you got something out of it. I was really surprised with the IMBA with that rule that they put there. That, that, that was the first thing I read that sort of put doubts in my mind. From there, I've realized I can't afford it. I'm not gonna be ready in time but I'm throwing my 150% support behind Dylan Thorpe down in Adelaide. I believe he's going to fucking kill it. He's looking shredded. I'm just really sorry, mate, that I can't get down there. Fundamentally, mate, uh, finances is the ruler of all, isn't it? I mean, when you go on holidays, when you've got houses to pay, credit cards to pay, a car to pay off, it's, it's just not fathomable. If they had a local show, I'd be inviting people to Alice Springs to compete with me. But anyways guys, with all that being said, I hope you've enjoyed the content lately. More content to come. I will be starting a new series. I want it to, you know, force me to stick to a surplus for a year. And with that being said, I do believe that the new title of the series is going to be 365 Days of Gains. Day 1, Day 5, Day 14, you know, etc, etc. Just like Big Rich Piana did, but it's going to be a natural version, and it's going to be me, your mate, from Alice Springs, Jacob McDonald. I'm going to be bringing you along on my journey from around about 89 to 90 kilograms, which is where I am right now. Well over 100, I'm thinking about 105 kilo in a year's time, and uh, we'll see where we're at there. I'm going to be a lot bigger, I'm going to be filled out. I'm not going to look skinny anymore. I'm not going to feel fucking stringy in the gym. The pumps are going to be amazing. Hopefully my strength is going to go up. That's one thing that hasn't gone up fuck all in the last two years, which I'm really pissed about. But, you know, if I, if I, I mean, in the last video, five weeks out, I said, I want to be a professional, natural bodybuilder. To compete in this state show down in South Australia, regardless of any of the other reasons, would not be, would not be putting me in a position to become that as soon as possible. I need to build my physique. I need to get bigger. I need to get denser. I need my muscles to mature. I just need to make some gains, man. So come along with me. The first episode of 365 Days of Gains will be out shortly. I'm not sure when it will be out, but I'm going to start the filming today. So until next time, guys, train hard, have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.